Hello and welcome. My name is Deborah Guthrie and joining me today is probably a lady that needs no introduction, but we will anyways, just in case, Cindy Elwood. She's with the Greater uh, Women's Center of Greater Lansing, the That's Women's right. Center of Greater Lansing, uh, located in Lansing, mm -hmm. serving and helping women across the area. Mm -hmm. And I'm thrown for a loop a little bit because just before we went on camera, uh, Cindy announced that she is retiring at the end of the month. And so we have a new executive director mm -hmm. who is coming on board and her name is Melina. M Melina, mm -hmm. did I get that right? Yep. Melina, and she's actually with us here in the office and she's watching this interview and all of my flub ups. Um, but thank you for coming on. You're welcome. I'm so sorry to see you leave. Uh, you've, you're a fabulous, fabulous woman who has done amazing things for our community and helped so many women. I can't tell you how many women I have sent your way into the center. Yeah, we just hit the 8,500 mark. Wow. And when did it start? 2005. 2005. Mm -hmm. And so what, tell us a little bit about the, say what the mission is of the, the Women's Center and uh, how it got started. Let's start there. The working mission of the Women's Center is to help people, women, realize their potential. And for us, that means that we want every woman to have access to economic self-sufficiency. Mm -hmm. So, because we know from other shows that we've done and, and other um, anecdotal as well as research data that women stay in bad relationships, whether it's a personal relationship, a work relationship, whatever it is, if they can't afford to change it. So if they can't afford to leave um, and be on their own, they will stay. Mm -hmm. And so we want that to not be a factor in the decision-making process. So we focus on those employment skills, those soft skills, sometimes assertiveness skills, all of those things that can help somebody take that step out of a bad situation and into something better. What is the, if you could help us out, what is the thought process? Because I know it's really hard for people to understand why someone would stay in a situation that's abusive, um, whether it's physical, whether it's emotional, um, there's a whole decision, there's a whole process, thought process that's happening um, as to why they stay in that situation. Mm -hmm. Well, I think there's as many reasons as there are women and, and some men. I mean, you love the person, mm -hmm. you want them to be better and do better. I mean, that's huge. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't be with them if you didn't have some feeling for them. And, yeah, there's and, a strong belief that they will change, mm -hmm. that, you, that but, their promises will mm -hmm. come through, that they'll right. change. Right, because you want them to. Mm -hmm. There's also the economic. Mm -hmm. if, you, if there's children involved, uh, oftentimes economic abuse is actually the number one form of domestic violence, economic. Mm -hmm. They control the money, they control mm -hmm. the checkbook, they control the car keys, they control the cell phones it's really hard to get out from under that mm -hmm. and feel with any sense of safety. And so, and plus it's very expensive. Yeah. If you've ever tried to rent an apartment or get a new cell phone, if your credit rating is ruined, it's gonna be really hard to do all of those things. So if they are very clever in systematically dismantling all of those things that will allow you to leave, then you have to stay because that's what they think, mm -hmm. is if they do all of that. And so how do you, um, it, it must take a while, how do you get women to the point in a financial situation to get out from that? Well, it does take a while. It, it takes probably longer than it would be, than they would like, obviously. But we do financial education training, mm -hmm. and we, we show people how to save money in ways that maybe they didn't think about before that, um, and, and community resources mm -hmm. that are available to them that can help them get out and be able to be in a safe place. I mean, that's what our shelters, our domestic violence shelters are for, is to get them safe yeah. and then help them with the resources to start rebuilding their life, get back yeah. on their feet. Yeah, you, uh, I mean, the types of services you provide are for some of the toughest life situations that mm -hmm. we wish no one would have to go through. 
uh, but it happens. Mm -hmm. um, and there, and you're there, and your center is there, and the people who are there at the center and the volunteers, they're all there to help um, women through these, you know, domestic violence, sexual abuse, sexual violence, um, recovery programs, uh, parental conflicts. Uh, let's talk about, we talked about domestic violence and, mm -hmm. and getting out from under that. Let's talk about some of the other situations and services that you help provide uh, women. Well, actually, our, even though our focus is employment, mm -hmm. we do a lot with employment. We do a lot with resume writing, cover letter writing, j just job searches. Mm -hmm. There's um, a huge number of women in our community um, for whom no one has ever asked, what would you like to do? Mm -hmm. What kind of job would you like to have? Mm. What would you like to do with your work life? Mm. And so that's a question that throws people a lot. But that's one of the first questions that we ask okay. is, we, yes, we're going to help you do whatever, but what is it that you would like to do? Well, I'll take any job. Mm -hmm. Well, when we start talking about that, no, they don't want any job. They mm -hmm. want, you know, they have in, some things in mind. But you may start off with, with things written down on a napkin. Mm -hmm or a hand scratch somewhere, and you're starting to build a resume. Women undersell their skills and don't believe they have a lot of skills, especially women, I think, who've spent more time raising their families than they have in the workforce, think they don't have skills. Man, they're probably some of the best managers out there. Exactly. And coordinators. I exactly. Mean, <laughs> you can juggle all that. You can schedule everything. Right. Yeah. Right. And there is actually a book in my office called If You Can um, Manage Kid or Manage a Household, You Can Manage Anything. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> and so we so we, we start there. Okay, how do you do all of this? How do you stay organized? How do you get your kids here and there? How do you meet these appointments? How do you do all of that? And all of a sudden, they're thinking, wow, I do have some skills. Mm -hmm. They may volunteer in a classroom. They may volunteer at their church. Mm -hmm. They may run a parent group. They, all these things that you don't think about that give you very marketable skills. Mm -hmm. So we, we start there, and we work at that. And then we go out and look and see what's there. Sometimes you have to go back to school if you're looking in a particular area. Mm -hmm. And we look at, at women going into fields like STEM, like skilled trades, where they can make a really good living with a short amount of education. Having what? to... Sorry. Why, why do you think women undersell themselves? Is it a... Is it in a, in a situation like, like domestic violence, is it learned helplessness? Or is it... You think women are just naturally <clears throat> like that? We're raised to not be proud of what we know and who we are and what we can do mm -hmm. still. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it's better than it was. I think the, the, the women who came up in the second wave of feminism are raising their daughters differently, but there's still a lot of institutional bias and internal bias in teachers and some of the other, in coaches and some of the other things that we're in those really critical times, late elementary, early, or middle school, mm -hmm. where girls are, you know, they're not quite sure. And depending on those mentors that they have and the people who are cheering them on and the kinds of things they get involved with and who's supporting them, they can take one path or another. Mm -hmm. if, if someone were listening and they needed to get out of, out of a situation or needed assistance and help with uh, getting back into the, into the job market to be what my mom calls self-sufficient she mm -hmm. raised me and said well, even when you get married make sure that your money money is separate and exactly. be self-sufficient you exactly. know don't merge the two um so if there's someone watching what 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 would you recommend as the first step or um to, well what or i would really reach out to yeah give us a call and come in mm -hmm. for an appointment what's your phone number 517-372-9163 it's confidential Yes. And what is the cost? Um, if you can't afford to pay, you pay nothing. Okay. So our sliding fee scale starts at a dollar. Mm -hmm. And we were just talking on the way over here that we're working on being able to accept insurance, but it's a really long and difficult process. And maybe we'll get there this year and maybe we won't. It's kind of up to the federal government at this point. <laughs> <laughs> We've done everything we can do. Um, so one of the things about the Women's Center is that we are the mental health safety net for this mm -hmm. community. We will see anyone, mm -hmm. regardless of ability to pay, and what whatever the issue is. Mm -hmm. You come in, we'll work We're with gonna you. We're gonna help you. You're That's gonna right. help them. You'll, mm -hmm. you'll get something. 
from it. And so you're a private nonprofit yep. uh, organization. How are you funded? We are funded primarily in two ways. Um, we don't get a lot of grant funding, mm -hmm. and so we are donor funded. We work really hard to um, get and keep our donors, and we do a couple of fundraisers every year, when that's coming up on Friday. Yeah, so you have, um, one of them is Bras for a Cause, which happens <coughs> in the fall. Actually, we're not doing that one anymore. You're not get no. out. No, for there's real? a reason why. Why? Well, the, the uh, fashion design program at Lansing Community College yeah. and, and Annie Wojo really took that, that fundraiser okay. over. Yeah, okay. And they're eliminating that program, so ah. she's not going to have any students. Yeah, I went down to the NAP Center for a meeting, and I was shocked to see that the fashion... It's gone. I, was, yeah. I couldn't believe it. I know. Wow. Okay. So yeah. they so they were running it and they were helping with that. Mm -hmm. Now that it's that program is yeah. Okay. They were, this this pat in 2018 was the last one. Okay. That we did. Well, that was and, a fabulous fundraiser. Oh, it was incredible. I I, it really I have incredible. just a few bras from it. <laughs> what they would do is they would design. Um, the fashion designers mm -hmm. would. Uh, Geez, I don't I don't want to use the word embellish, but they would basically <laughs> embellish these mm -hmm. bras. Mm -hmm. Um, and you would bid on them. Right. They would create works of art yeah. with a theme around domestic violence and sexual assault and reclaiming. The, the bra event started around the issue of breast cancer and it kind of morphed into um, all, all the different abuses that, that women have and all the things that get taken away. So it started off with reclaiming the bra mm -hmm. years ago. And um, it kind of then we expanded it out because we look at all survivors. It doesn't matter what you're a survivor of. If mm -hmm. you're a survivor, if you identify as a survivor, that's all we need. Mm -hmm. So these students, some of them were 17, 18 years old, were coming up with these incredible works of art. And they designed the poetry. They designed everything. Oh, the stories, the stories. that go with the bra, yeah. just yeah. breathtaking. It, I just... Mm -hmm. Gets yeah. into your soul. So it's it's really sad mm -hmm. that that they don't have that opportunity anymore. Not mm -hmm. only just for the fashion stuff, but but be able be able to create that and speak to the world that way. And so you have two other events. Yes. Um, one of which is coming up this Friday, mm -hmm. uh, March fifteenth. It is the We Laugh Comedy Show. It's in Rio Town Town. Yep. At the Cadillac Room. Mm -hmm. And tell us a little bit about this event that's coming up. So our comedy night is about 14, 13 or 14 years old. Mm -hmm. And it used to be called She Laughs. Right. Yep. That's right. I forgot. Yep. Yeah. And it was She Laughs for the first 11 or 12 years. And then, frankly, I got bored with it. <laughs> so I decided, yeah, we are going to do one this year. And boy, was that a mistake. Um, yeah, so it, it, the vengeance was brought on me for okay. not doing this event. <laughs> so in order to make it a little bit different, a little more inclusive, a little broader audience appeal, we decided to put men and women together and then let the people vote on who was funnier, okay. men or women. So mm -hmm. that's kind of what we do now. We have two men and two women this year, and, and they're all funny. They're mm -hmm. all hysterically funny. Mm -hmm. And so it's a wonderful time. It's been a long winter. Everybody's <laughs> tired of this mess. And we're ready so, for a good laugh. We, we are really ready. are. We are totally ready. So, yeah, come on out. It's $20 a ticket for general seating. If you want to sit up front, it's 40 mm -hmm. um, But any seats... All proceeds go to the yes. center. Yep. Okay. Yep. And can people still be a sponsor of this event? They could, sure. Okay. Yeah, if they wanted to, give me a call. All right. 372-9163. Okay. Yeah. Let me ask you, um, you said 2000, did you say 2005 is when the center got started? Mm -hmm. Yep. What, what was your motivation or passion behind getting this started? There was a group of us, um, the, the chapter is no longer here, but it was with the National Organization for Women. Mm-hmm. And at that time, this was back in the late 90s, early 2000s, um, we had a hotline. Because now is a political action organization, but yep. we ran a hotline. And the hotline came into my house. Okay. And so 24 hours a day, seven days a week, I took phone calls from wow. women who needed something and there wasn't a resource for them. Mm -hmm. There was nowhere to send them. And so we started talking at an executive board meeting 
one time and I was giving the statistics of the calls that had come in and in our uh, board chair at the time, Zena, said, why, why isn't there a women's center in Lansing? Why isn't there? And we're like, well, we don't know. Mm -hmm. Well, let's start one. That's what we did. An idea mm -hmm. that came through fruition. Yep. We, well, nonprofits are developed to solve a problem. Yeah. And the problem was none of these services existed for mm -hmm. women. And in Michigan, unless you have minor children in your custody, there are no public services for you. Mm -hmm. And even back then, there wasn't really any public services. So single women or women whose children were gone had nowhere to go to mm -hmm. get anything. Mm -hmm. None. If you weren't working, too bad for you. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of how we started. And the menu of services that we offer today is pretty much the same as we offered 15 years ago. I was going to ask you, which services were the first ones when the program started? Yep. It's always been about employment and counseling. Mm -hmm. And we, when we, we have a job seeker support group that meets on Mondays from 10 to 12. Mm -hmm. And if, if somebody has been unemployed for a while or is having trouble getting a job or keeping a job, there's usually some reasons behind that. So we'll encourage them to get some counseling while they're looking for work. Because also, if you've ever looked for a job in today's market, it can be pretty soul sucking. And, and if you haven't and if you haven't been in it for a while, right. it's changed. Yes, it has. And Dramatically. It's, it's real easy to get depressed and give up. Yeah. So if they have a place to go to debrief, to vent once a week, it really helps keep them motivated. So those two things go hand in hand. Then we're looking at Okay, so what are you bringing to us? You're bringing, you're unemployed. Why are you unemployed or you're underemployed? Well, because I'm in this situation or I'm in that situation or I didn't finish school. Mm -hmm. When we first opened, we had a lot of people who didn't have high school diplomas mm. or GEDs. Mm. And so getting them that will open up a whole nother world of possibilities for them that yeah, they didn't have Because how can before. someone you can. hire a person who didn't finish something? Right. It's it's well, really that's hard one of the, to look, you know, to look at mm -hmm. that's an applicant one of the, like that. The things that that it never used to be an issue, mm -hmm. but it is in today's world. Mm -hmm. Back when our parents were, there's a lot of people that quit school to go work on the farm, to go to the factory, to go to war, all those things. So it wasn't as big of a deal, but it is now. The whole landscape has changed. But man, at least finish high school. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's not always great. It sucks sometimes, but man, you just got to get through it mm -hmm. and finish it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, what have been some of the challenges along the way uh, for the center? Outside of funding, mm -hmm. which for any nonprofit is, is, is an issue, but I would say the social challenges for us have been that people don't think that, or they believe there isn't the problems that there are. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, if, if she would do this, yes. or if she would do that, yeah. or if blah, blah, blah. Um, and so we, we already judge people before we know their story. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I run into this when I give speaking engagements that, you know, what, why is there a women's center, not a men's center? Why, are, why don't women leave? Why blah, blah, blah. You mm -hmm. know, there's just all these things that we sort of heap on people mm -hmm. because we are in the instantaneous mm -hmm. world now. Mm -hmm. um, the internet has changed our society mm -hmm. and in some ways not for the good. Mm -hmm. um, and I think there's a lot more judgment. I think there's a lot more presumption that people have opportunities to do things and just didn't do it because they're lazy or they're this or they're that. Mm -hmm. And so we don't have room to hear the story because we're already judging somebody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, social media, if you think about it, I mean, attention span is five seconds mm -hmm. and then you move on. So to think about somebody actually um, going through the whole thought process mm -hmm. of getting help mm -hmm. when help is needed, that's to, to the instantaneous world, that's such a difficult, it can be a difficult concept to think about. You know, but those decisions are really hard. Um, well, one of the things that we that we did up front, and we still do this, is that we're kind of the anti-paperwork people. Our intake form is one page front and back. We don't care if you That's give us easy. your right name. Yeah, it doesn't matter to us. Yeah. however you want to be identified is how you're identified. We don't ask for driver's license. You don't have to give us 16 pieces of ID in order to get services. You walk in the door. How can we help? 
and mm -hmm. that's where we start. Well, it's a massive help right there. Right. I've heard so many complaints about right. other services where you have to fill out document after document, and it's and you got to do deterring. it again. It is. It's a total deterrent. Mm -hmm. And you know, if you have little kids that are with you, and you're yeah. trying to do all that stuff, yeah. You know, it's let's make it. Easy. Easier. Let's look at it from our client's point of view and the person we're trying to help. What is going to help her be successful? Mm -hmm. And that's why we have, and I, I joke with people about this, but we have the best coffee on Michigan Avenue. <laughs> you know, Strange Matter does a really good job. <laughs> However, we were there first, and th there is nothing that a good cup of coffee and a good piece of chocolate can't improve on. So we always have that. Two things I live on. Right, exactly. <laughs> Chocolate and coffee. Well, it's just, you know, sitting down with somebody yeah. and sharing a cup of coffee or mm -hmm. a cup of tea and just sitting and being with, being present with them mm -hmm. and listening can change everything. Yeah. Everything. We're in such a world of sharing, 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 showing, 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 telling, telling, telling. Sometimes we forget to do the listening mm -hmm. part of it too. Yep. And that is important. And the other thing I want to make sure that we mention is we do have a professional clothes closet. It is the yes. only closet, professional clothes closet in this area. And we are accepting donations. Uh, I was while, tempted to bring a box today. Yeah. <laughs> well, you should have. Um, there was a time when we were just overrun because we had a, um, Robert Half does a huge clothing drive for us in the fall. Okay. And I think they brought in something like 300 suits. Wow. And it takes a long time to inventory all that and find a space for it. So mm -hmm. we, we couldn't take things for a while, but we're back to being able to take them. Mm -hmm. Our closet is free and open to anyone who would like to come and use it. It does. You do not have to be a client of the center. You don't have to be poor. You don't mm -hmm. have to do anything except need something to wear for some reason. Yeah, that's one of the toughest parts is if you don't have a job and you're looking for a job, mm -hmm. uh, how do you afford to buy a suit to exactly. even go look for one exactly. and dress professionally yep. in the first place? Right. And I mean, talk about another deterrent, you mm -hmm. know, so you're just breaking down these barriers, yep. assisting women to be able to, to go for these job interviews and mm -hmm. do this. Do you see March's Women's History Month, um, you know, your center is, I mean, I know it's only been there since 2005, but it's a historical, it, so to speak, in its own right in, in Lansing and what it provides for women around here. How do you, how do you see um, yourself, and I'm so, I'm so sad to see you leaving, but how do you see yourself as a leader in the, in the footprint that you've left on this community? Because you have. I think, you know, when we created the Women's Center, we really did create it as a judgment-free zone. Mm -hmm. We don't presume to know your story. We don't presume to know how to fix you. We don't even try to fix you. We listen and we help where we can and where it's appropriate. And I think good leaders, the number one quality in a good leader for me is the ability to listen. Mm -hmm and really truly listen to somebody. Not listen to respond, not listen thinking up an answer to what they're saying or a rebuttal, but truly opening your heart and listening to someone's story. And that has saved countless women in our community from taking their life. So if, you know, if the legacy is, if, if Melina's coming on and, and the legacy is, is, is maintaining that judgment-free zone, mm -hmm. maintaining that space where safety is number one next to listening, where someone can go and get what they need without all the, all the attachments. Mm -hmm. Because that's how we empower people. We give them the tools from our toolbox and our tool chest. We give them the tools to make a better life. But some people don't know what kind of tools that they need mm -hmm. because they haven't had that opportunity. So if we can sit with them and we can hear their story and find out what kind of tools are going to work best for them, that's all we need to do. We give you the fish, mm -hmm. the fishing pole, and you fish. Um, yeah, empowerment's a big part of leadership it's huge. as well. It's huge. It's, it's huge. And empower other people. And just letting people know that there's nothing wrong with them. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you have these things, these challenges in your life. Yeah, everyone has them. You never know. 
What are some uh, parting words that you have uh, to say? Or just, uh, I think you said a little bit already, you know, the continued uh, legacy that you would like Melina mm -hmm. uh, to carry. I think women make up half the population and hold up half the sky. And yet we ha only have a quarter of the funding mm -hmm. to do the things that we need to do. We need to be at the table. Mm -hmm. Invite us, mm -hmm. listen to us, give us a chance to prove that we have the, the abilities and skills that you're looking for. Thank you, Cindy. Anything else that you want to say? Go state. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining. I'm so glad to have you on, as always. Yeah. Uh, great conversation. And I want to thank you for watching.